7 speed tips to 7x your workflow in Figma. Let's go. Let's start with tip number one. In this tip, I'll show you how do you zoom into a particular frame without doing a lot of the hassle. So the easiest trick is if you name the layers and you know which layer you want to go to, you just double tap on the frame icon and you will be like, you know, zoomed into that particular frame. So you don't have to like, you know, manually go to your trackpad and pinch it to go to a screen and then navigate it. But it only gets better. You don't just get to do this with frames. You can do this with components, frames, layers anything so that was your tip number one let's move on to the tip number two in this i'll show you how do you select the frame so while selecting a frame it can be very difficult so if if you're trying to let's say select this frame you'll have to exactly click on the home thing and sometimes you might miss it and if you click on the frame you might be selecting the auto layouts layers and things like that groups so here is an easy tip for you you can press command and click on the screen and you'll be able to select the entire frame this is the tip number two let's move on to tip number three this is a component that you have if you want to select the things inside it the easiest way to do that is to press enter and you'll be able to select the things inside it if you are already there and you want to select the bigger parent you just press backslash and you will be able to select them it's a very easy way to select the parent or the child inside them tip number four so there are two ways of moving things so you can press the arrow keys and it will move in that direction one pixel at a time there's another way so let's say I have this one I can if you are able to see the pixels now what I'll do is I'll press shift while pressing the arrows so can you see it is moving by quite a bit so if you see the default value that you will have on Figma would be 10 pixels so once you press shift and you press the arrow key in any direction I'm just pressing in the lower direction but you can very much do this for any direction for you it will move 10 but you can change that how much you want to move because 10 is it's not divisible by 4 so it's not a very good spacing scale so you want it to be in the multiples of 4 so I'm using it 8 and here's how you change that so you go to the figma icon you click here you go to preferences and you click on the nudge amount once you click you can select how much the big and the small nudge would be the small nudge is when you press the arrow keys so if you press the arrow key once without pressing shift how much it should move so right now it's one you can make it three four whatever and you can change the big nudge also which means when you press shift and then press an arrow key how much it should shift so i'll make it eight you will see that let's go here one two three four five six seven eight so ideally it should move over here and i'll do one so to see that like you know the, the one is the same like you know it moved eight pixels so that's the way you can change the nudge amount i hope this was helpful now let's talk about tip number five so there is this one i have created with the glow and drop shadows and things like that with the stroke and there is this simple thing i have created so what i can do is i can go over here and say copy properties and paste it over here and that will take all the properties that this one had and paste it to that. The shortcut for that is command option C and go here and paste it command option V. So this copies all the properties that the previous element had and pasted it onto the next one. But what if I only want one of the properties to be the same? For example, if I want the color to be same. So one of the ways I can do that is just copying it from here, going here, clicking here and pasting it. That's one way. But here's another cool way to do it. So you can go over here, select this thing, copy, go over here, click on this and paste. So this is another way you can copy styles. You can copy properties. Look, let's look at another one. So if I want this one to have a stroke as well, I can just go over here and copy this and paste this. One thing that you have to keep in mind, and this is only a problem with stroke and I'm sure Figma is going to fix it. Right now it doesn't take size into account, right? So you will have to set the size manually. The third thing that you can do from here is if you have added a drop shadow to it you can also go and copy this and paste it onto the new one right so I have pasted it over here so you don't have to manually create that style again you just can copy the property and paste it onto the new thing if you're liking the video so far make sure you give us a thumbs up it motivates us to keep creating great content for you guys let's move on to tip number six let's say I have the same uh, rectangle from the last time and I want to scale it so if I'm doing it while I have selected the move tool what will happen is if I do that it doesn't keep the aspect ratio and anything same so that 
that is going to cause a problem. Also, it keeps the stroke the same as you look at it. But here is another cool feature. So you can press K and you can expand it. It keeps the aspect ratio same. Also, the stroke changes with the size of the rectangle. That is cool and we have been doing it for a while. But Figma recently released one more feature. So what happens is when we are doing this, we don't know how big or small it is getting, right? So we don't understand how many X this new size is. So here's a feature for that. So what you can do is you can select how much like you want to make it large. So right now if it's a, I'll make it 500 for this calculation being simpler and I'll just go to here. So now if I want to make it thousand by thousand, I just have to go here and say 2x and that is so cool and the stroke increase with that as well. Here's another cool part. So right now it's increasing from the center, but I don't want this to overlap with this. So I just move the anchor point here, right? And then I'll make it 2x. So you'll see that anchor point remain the same and it extended in the other direction. You can move it anywhere uh, on the any side and it will extend in the opposite direction to that or that will be the anchor point and that will increase the size. So this is a very cool way to scale things and the strokes will remain consistent as well. I hope this helps. Before I tell you the last tip on the list, I want you to pause the video and go in the comments and tell me which tip did you like the most. Let's go to the tip number seven. And for tip number seven, we have the same frames that we had in the tip number one where we started and I want you to show you a very cool hack. So most people ask what does this slicing tool do and a lot of people has asked me. So today I'm going to tell you what this slicing tool does. So let's say I want to just take a screenshot of this. So what I'll do is I'll go here. I'll press S which is a shortcut for slice. You can also come here and select this. I'll just slice this area and this is what I have made a selection inside the canvas. What I'll do is I'll press command shift C which copies this as a PNG and now I can go to Slack, I can go to WhatsApp and paste this and this will go as a screenshot. If you want to bring that back in the Figma as well, you can do that. So I've just pasted it back over here. So those were the seven tips. Now let me tell you about the bonus tip. Have you ever created a polygon and thought about why there is an extra space in the bottom? Here's the reason, because this is not a triangle, this is a polygon and polygon has multiple sides. So if you look at this, you'll see that this is not like this inside. We know this is for radius and if I pull it the radius will increase but what is this for so this as it turns out for the number of sides of polygon so if I increase it you will see the number of sides of the polygon increase and to accommodate that it has already taken the space that it might need right so that's the reason this extra spacing is there but what if you only wanted to make a triangle and you don't want this extra space so here's a way you can get rid of this extra space if you only wanted a triangle to begin with you can press command shift O and it will just remove all the extra space. So even if you are going for a polygon with more number of sides, the all the extra space will be removed and you'll only be left with this. I hope this helps. Let's move on to bonus number two. So let's say you're working on an app where there are multiple text sizes and things like that. So what you can do here is there is a cool thing that you can do. So let's say you want to select all the text with this style, right? All the same properties. So first select the text of any component. It could be a rectangle. It could be anything which has been repeated throughout the interface you press command and slash you go to so you go here and you say select all with same properties and as you do that you will see the all the things that will have the same property as this one where we started with it will select all of them so if I go here and I can even select a single property so I can go here select this and say select all with same fill so the ones with have the same color will get selected and this is true for not just this you can do it let's go back to the tip number one and see how how can we use it even further? So let's say I come here, I select this and I go again to command and slash. I say select all with same fill. As soon as I do that, everything in this file, which has uh, like, you know, the same color as this one gets selected. And the crazy part is that now I can change it because I can give them a new fill if I want to, and it will get changed all across. If you're interested in learning more Figma tips, you should definitely check this video out. This is all for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, happy design designing.